G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here. In this video we're going to look at the LEGO Porsche 911 GT3 RS that was released in 2016. It was the first in a new wave of branded, elaborate supercar Technic builds. How does it hold up five years down the line? We also give a quick review in terms of build experience, value for money, displayability and playability. We also turn over one issue about the build that LEGO appear to have gotten wrong. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. Here we have the 2016 Lego Porsche Technic Set 911 GT3 RS and thought it would just be interesting to see how it held up now that we're five years on and see what it's created and also what's come after. With this orange Porsche 911 GT, there's a considerable amount of car here and quite a number of features. To give an idea of sort of scale of it, you're talking about this is about the same length as the 1989 Batmobile, which was released recently. We'll just give a quick rundown of some features. You've got, you know, independent shocks on all the wheels. Uh, you've got the front, which then opens up and then reveals a little suitcase in there. It doesn't have a bottom of it, which is a little disappointing. Of course you have your two side doors which open up and reveal the interior there and your steering wheel is connected to the wheels so if you turn the wheels the steering wheel they're going to turn each other you got your paddle shifters here which will then work the four speed gearbox which actually does work and there's a whole nother video which i've got on that showing how that works and going into that you've then got your drive neutral and reverse stick lever here which again it actually does work properly with the gearbox which is quite amazing there is an issue though when you build that gearbox is the instructions are incorrect and the way lego addressed it was with a generic copy pasta type response which is really disappointing given what's happened with this car but i'll get into more of that a little bit later on from the rear the spoiler lifts up and you can see actually inside to the engine and it's a little bit disappointing that they actually then covered all the engine itself up because below that actually in there is a working camshaft cylinder area so if we have a look on the underside you can start to see some of the gears and cogs and everything all your main sort of gearing and gearbox is actually all in here which is a bit of a shame that you go through and you build all that and then you can't see it but then in subsequent models they've made a real point to make this sort of area accessible in the Bugatti and the Lamborghini so you don't go through all that effort to build something which then gets hidden away and you can't really see it or appreciate it in that other video I've got the car half built and you can then see how all the gears and everything work and what the issues were with it and things like that so check around for that so it's really fascinating to actually be able to see and understand and appreciate all the effort and time that's gone into getting the gears and the paddle shifters and everything working here we have the original box which might not be as eye-catching as what it is by today's standards but I think this was the first one to really go for this black minimalist sort of look and I mean at the time they're calling it a 16 plus obviously now Lego marketing are going crazy with the 18 plus but I think this was the one which probably triggered it all off the outside of the box has a really nice finish and just sort of seeing it's going for that premium sort of look and fading off with the gradient there trying to just you know keep it more with the emphasis on the actual car itself being that nice orange color and popping off against the black the edge is just showing some alternative sort of angles that you can see in there and one purely from the side of course the obligatory one-to-one -one, in this case the wheel rim which was a new design for this car in the back of the box mainly just showing a couple of the main features that you can expect to find as you're building it and then a top view of the car now with these boxes they really tried to go for a premium sort of feel and experience so as you open it up they then as opposed to the normal way of doing lego boxes they split it up so that as you're going through it each section of building has its own box one two three and four and then instructions are like a telephone book originally you would have the wheels slotted in there but it's you know really nicely done minimalist sleek and black which again they've now followed up with the bugatti and the lamborghini doing this sort of style boxing with the instructions they've also tried to continue this premium sort of style feel where you know it's a nice sort of telephone size book and then yeah nice badge on the front there and then you know really going through and designing it out and the first 36 odd pages or so are more about you know the history of the car heritage of porsche just giving a nice sort of background and then also to how the lego group was then interacting with porsche to sort of you know get this to come to life and you can sort of see a nice little side shot there of what you're actually building yeah the driver's point of view about it going on some more with that 
and then the collaboration efforts that they continue to talk about. And a bit of a timeline from, you know, 2013, having the idea and working on it in secret, all the way through to the release, release in 2016. And then a little bit about the actual Lego designer here and his garage and things like that, and, you know, giving his background in terms of technic and mechanics and that. And then also to one of the VPs for motorsports with Porsche and having the original Lego supercar and how that then sort of influenced him and led him to where he is today. Then talking a bit about the assembly line and production and things like that, which is quite interesting because then when you're actually doing the build, you'll do something very similar where you're building the, the chassis and the drivetrain and then they come together much like they would on the actual real assembly line. And then we get on to section one, which is related to box one, and then it's broken up throughout the manual into those box parts. And then section two, box two, sort of give you an idea of what you're going to be building for the next little section. Same with section three. And then finally with section four, the same sort of thing. So it makes it a more interesting experience in terms of building it and going through it and having it relative to what would happen in real life. The only thing with having in one sort of telephone sized book is by the time you build through it once or twice, because of the weight of the book pulling on the spine all the time when it's open like that, it then has split the front cover off it, which is not a really ideal sort of way. Um, so certainly with later ones where they split the books up, much better idea because uh, you've got about 855 steps to do the whole build. The sticker sheets are rather minimal, which is quite nice for one of these sorts of sets. I mean, you've got some stickers on the luggage there, and the disc brakes will have their own little sticker, one on the back here for the Porsche, a couple of the uh, dials in there as well. You've got them there, another print over on the other side. The only real printed piece that they have is this front fenders here where they've got these little scoops on the real car and things like that for airflow and the hubcaps have got this nice rs type print on them otherwise most of the rest of it is all just done with the actual pieces themselves in terms of build experience there's a lot here to do there's like 2700 parts so you're going to take a fair while to get this done anywhere between about 12 and 15 hours at a bit of an estimate and particularly when you first start off building that gearbox you really do need to pay attention to what you're doing Building out the paddle shifters and the steering mechanism in this place and the way that that works, it's a really interesting sort of experience and it's in a really tight space. Building out the gearbox as well is really quite amazing considering what they've been able to achieve in there. The only downside is that instead of the gears operating 1, 2, 3, 4, they operate 1, 3, 2, 4, which is a mistake in the design and around about step 269, what it is is they've actually switched over a couple of these cogs here which going back and looking at when it was first identified as an issue, Lego's response was a little bit of copy pasta. They were saying it was meant to be like that because of the efficiency of the gears, which is a lot of nonsense. It just saves them from openly admitting that they made a mistake and certainly looking at some of the responses on forums seemed to indicate much the same. For the most part, nobody's ever really going to know because nobody's really going to drive this. But I do have an intention to go through and put a motor and make it fully remote control into it. So having that wrong was a real issue and it probably meant about another hour of pulling it back apart and then rebuilding it and then putting it back in i get it mistakes get made but the fact then that you don't try to own it and fob it off as you know an intentional design issue is a little bit weak and poor but by the same token i can appreciate this was like the first supercar that they built and i'm sure they didn't want to go back to porsche and say ah oh, yeah by the way guys we made a fundamental mistake in the instructions that probably wouldn't have been a good or fun look in terms of value for money initially when all these technic sets are released they come with a premium price so if you brought it day one you might be paying a little bit more than what you could have otherwise over time they generally seem to reduce or you can pick them up on discount or sales originally it's about 260 pounds or 300 american dollars so the price to part ratio is around 9p 11 cents seems fair you are getting a lot of car and it is quite heavy and it's the sort of thing which certainly by the time you put 12 to 15 hours into it you know you can get some real good value for money out of that in terms of playability out of the box it's actually quite good i mean you've got all the different things which open and close you've got a working steering wheel i mean in fact you've got a working gears and paddle shifters once you make the appropriate modifications it's pretty amazing and then we've seen quite a number of different ways of basically making it fully remote control, which usually involves ripping out the cams in there, putting some motors in there. That can be from very basic sort of implementations to some really quite sophisticated ones. So you can have the whole thing. So fully remote control with all the gears and everything. So if you go that far, you know, it's quite amazing what you can do with it and 
how you can play with it and extend the life of it. In terms of displayability, I mean, for Technic, you know, they've done a really, really nice job and, it, you know, it looks like what it's meant to. Certainly with Lego and Technic, it's hard to get some of the softer, more subtle shapes, which is what sometimes they've done in here is use these sort of curved pieces to give you those nice sweeping lines and things, even though right next to it, it's nicely and well hidden there. You can see there's a little black pile on there, which is the main sort of structural supports. So you get that in places where you get the aesthetics being done by the curved pieces, but then the structure being hidden away with the black, which is an interesting way of getting around it and doing it. They've been able to get the aggressive lines and features in places, even if some of it does feel a little flimsy. Whether it's these lights, which, you know, easily slide backwards and forwards, or just, you know, you can see that it's bouncing around a little bit and doesn't take much in certain areas. But certainly, once you grab it in the right position, it's pretty easy to pick up and take wherever you need to. Overall, I think it displays quite well for the time and still holds up today. The only thing that seems to be a little bit naffed is this printed piece here on both sides, We've got the air intakes and things like that. I suppose it's probably, if you didn't have it there, you'd notice it. And if it is there, it gives that little bit of detail, but it's still like, mm, okay, not really sold on that. But just little minor things. I know sometimes people can take issue with the fact that these friction pins are the blue. And when you're getting almost complimentary with the blue and the orange, you'd think that that might actually really harm it. But overall, I don't think you really notice it, particularly from afar, unless you're really looking for it. So I'm not too concerned about that. Here is the one page summary. For build experience and giving it 50%, mainly that's because of the way that they've handled the issue with the gears. I can understand mistakes happen, but the way that they've handled the response to it is really, really bad. So that's what really pulls down that score. As there was an amount of time of trying to backtrack and figure out what the issue was, then pull it apart and then put it back together again. Value for money was 80% because it seemed reasonable for what you're getting. Playability, there's a lot of features and functionality there built into it. And displayability, also 85% as it looks pretty good on a shelf and it is what it's meant to be without going crazy on stickers. Obviously targeting Technic fans who like the bigger, more elaborate builds, your Porsche and your big car fans as well. All things considered, it's quite an amazing set. It's the first of the supercar ones, so unfortunately it's been retired for a few years now, and now that they've also released the Bugatti and the Lamborghini, people are then trying to go back and get this original one. So overall, the score is 75%. It'd probably be about 85% had it not had the build issue of the gears in the gearbox being wrong and LEGO not really owning up to that. So five years down the line, how does it hold up? Surprisingly well. Aside from the gearbox snafu, the four-speed paddle shifters and gearbox is done really well and the exterior styling still holds up great. I'm sure if it was done today, the angles would be pushed a little bit further to what they would be, but I think overall, Porsche set the mould all the others have refined and made better, from the exposed gearboxes to the packaging to the general build. If you enjoy your more elaborate Technic builds or just like supercars or Porsche Fanatic, definitely one worthwhile having a crack at if you can find it on the secondary market for a reasonable price. If you've enjoyed and or gotten something out of this video, then hit that thumbs up button and or consider subscribing. Has this video piqued your interest in Porsche or do you already own a set? Sound off in the comments below. Or just leave the word Porsche and we'll know you watched the whole video. To see more detail on how the gearbox and paddles work, check out this video. To see the Technic Rough Crane possessed mistake, check out this video. Otherwise, these videos might be of interest. Thanks for watching and that's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.